Joining us now is Tal Heinrich. She is the spokeswoman for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Thank you for making time for us today. My okay. pleasure, Chris. Iran has vowed to retaliate after an Israeli strike killed those senior Iranian officials in Syria. So this raises the threat of a broader conflagration. Tell us how the prime minister thinks about the threat of this conflict expanding. First, um, the building that was struck, and uh, again, we've seen those reports. All I can do is echo the words of uh, the IDF uh, spokesperson, Daniel Agari, um, and, and he said that um, it, it was uh, not a, a diplomatic mission of any sort of kind. Um, uh, the building that was struck, according to uh, our intelligence, was in fact a military base in disguise. Um, Iran... Uh, has a record of attacking embassies. Let me remind uh, the viewers here. If it's the U.S. embassy in Tehran taking Americans hostage, if it's the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires killing many, many people, you're the big Satan in the United States, we're the small Satan, Israel. This is how they view us, because we are standing in their way of expanding their sick ideology and the, their uh, Islamist revolution around the world. Um, we will defend ourselves uh, whenever it takes, wherever it takes. We don't seek wars. But if somebody's hurting us, if somebody's threatening to hurt us uh, further, uh, we will do whatever it takes to, to defend ourselves, of course. Okay, so uh, let's listen to uh, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken on Thursday. Israel is a democracy. Hamas, a terrorist organization. And democracies place the highest value on human life. If we lose that reverence for human life, we risk becoming indistinguishable from those we confront. The rhetoric from the Biden administration has certainly escalated uh, against uh, the Israeli effort. How do you respond to that? Chris, Washington and Jerusalem, we want the same things. We want to see all hostages coming back home <clears throat> Excuse me. We want, uh, of course, to make sure that Gaza will never pose a terror threat to us again, and uh, that includes uh, eliminating uh, Hamas. We want the we have the same uh, we share the same uh, views on the war objectives as Israel has defined them. And while Israel is working on the ground uh, towards accomplishing these objectives, we want to see minimal civilian suffering and minimal collateral damage, minimal civilian casualty in Gaza. Now, Hamas they want exactly the opposite. They're seeking to increase the suffering of the civilians in Gaza and increase the civilian casualty in Gaza because they want international pressure to be applied on Israel uh, for their own vile actions and let them live another day to carry out another October 7th massacre. So if anyone out there is putting the pressure on Israel instead of on Hamas, um, you're playing right into their hands, falling right into their trap. That's what they want you to do. So we only ever really get the funhouse mirror version of what's going on in domestic politics uh, in Israel. So maybe you can decode for us a little bit. We hear about the pressure on the prime minister, on his government. We hear about the protests in the street. We hear about uh, the, the demands that for the hostages to be released and, and this pressure. What's the domestic political scene uh, for your boss right now? First, everyone wants to see the hostages released. We're working uh, towards that goal in various ways by exerting heavy military pressure on Hamas and also seeking the diplomatic avenue, uh, of course, behind the scenes. We will continue to seek it, even though Hamas keeps hardening their positions, the more uh, flexible Israel gets in the negotiations. But regarding the protest, yes, you do see protests in Israel. We're a democratic country. Um, and and uh, but, but the issue is that no, not many people, in fact, in my country are engaged in politics right now because because when Hamas targeted us six months ago, they didn't care who voted for which party, who was for a judicial reform or against the judicial reform. Um, they targeted all of us. And that's why uh, what you see in my country six months after October 7th is mainly unity. Uh, we are shoulder to shoulder, standing shoulder to shoulder, united in this fight against an existential genocidal threat. It's called Hamas and it's called Hezbollah. And it all goes back to this axis of evil led by Iran. All of their proxies, they're trying to hurt us. If it's the Houthis, if it's the militias from Iraq, the same ones that attack, uh, you know, uh, American bases. So um, we're in this together and we will win this war. We're united until total victory. That's, that's what the soldiers who paid the ultimate price uh, falling in battle in Gaza and just over the past 24 hours, four more soldiers fell in battle. That's what they wanted to see. That's, that's their will to us. Tal Heinrich, 
thank you for making time for us today. Thank you, Chris.